Well, a man knocked on my door and asked for a small donation toward the local community swimming pool. So I gave him a glass of water. Today we have the healing at the pool of Bethesda, which has yeah. been discovered in the year 1880. The archaeologists were digging in Jerusalem. They kept going deeper and deeper, and they discovered this pool by the Sheep Gate. They also discovered the five porticos. It was a, when it was originally built, a, a beautiful a pool. And uh, it originally was used that when the sheep would come through, they had to go through this pool to be washed in order to enter into Jerusalem, there to be sacrificed at the temple. But over time, because of the five porticos in the shade, it was a great place to get out of the heat. And so the poor, it says here in John, the, the blind, the lame, the crippled would um, go there and to be out of the hot sun and to be able to bathe in the pool. <clears throat> this pool also was considered to have miraculous healing power, similar to Lourdes. If you go to Lourdes today, it's been over 6,000 healings at Lourdes in southern France, the miraculous waters and so people would go there, and the tradition was that when the water was stirred up, that indicated a, an angel was there, an angel that would intercede and bring about healing. The first person who would make their way into the water when it was stirred up on occasion, the tradition was that they would be cured. But this poor soul who's been ill, <clears throat> paralyzed for 38 years, could never get there. Maybe by the time he would crawl on his hands and feet, somebody else would go into that place. So Jesus meets him and knows he's been sick a long time and says, do you want to be well? It's a rather interesting question. Do you want to be well? He wanted to see what this man's will was. Did he really desire it? And some people really don't want to be well or they don't want to change. They don't want to give up their sinful habits. Some people just don't want to uh, make the changes. And so the Lord wanted to see him, did he want to be well? Of course, he gives the excuses that he can never get to the water when it's stirred up. But Jesus, the divine son of God, the, the power to heal, says, rise, take up your mat and walk. Imagine this man who had been crippled for 38 years, immediately his legs were strengthened, his ankles were strengthened, and he's able to stand up. And Jesus tells him to take his mat and walk. Well, of course, it was a Sabbath, and he was the local authorities, the high priest, the chief priest, saw him carrying his mat through the temple and said, this is a violation of the law. It's the Sabbath rules that you're not allowed to carry anything on the Sabbath. So, of course, the man, he blames Jesus. Well, it wasn't my fault. The man told me to carry my mat. They said, who was it? Of course, the man did not know. But later on, it says, Jesus found him in the temple area. And the Lord says again, something very interesting. He says, you are now well, do not sin anymore. So nothing worse may happen to you. What's worse than being paralyzed for 38 years? Well, of course that would be, sin is much worse, total separation from God and hell for all eternity. That's much worse than being paralyzed in this world for 38 years. So the Lord is warning him, you've been now healed physically, stay close to God, avoid sin, so nothing worse may happen to you. In other words, don't be separated from God. Make sure you stay close to God and do not sin. So the man went off and told the religious leaders who it was, and he says they began to persecute Jesus because he did these things on the Sabbath. So one of the reasons why we have this Reading today is because it's getting close to Holy Week and you see the animosity growing among the religious leaders. This would eventually lead to Good Friday, to the passion and death, and ultimately the resurrection of Christ. Really the last reason why the church gives us this reading is because of water. Because of the, the first reading was about the water that flows from the temple. And so we have this water in the New Testament the pool of Bethesda, which flowed from the temple. And of course, Jesus is the true temple. He'd say, destroy this temple, and in three days I will rebuild it. And when the soldier thrust the lance through the heart of Christ, outflowed 
blood and water, which represent the blood of the Eucharist and the waters of baptism. So this is re a reading that's often done during Lent <clears throat> as we prepare, as really thousands of people throughout the church prepare for baptism at Easter, where they'll be washed in the waters of baptism. So we'll be blessed to have many people baptized throughout the church at Easter, and it is not the water that comes from the original temple of Jerusalem, but it's the water that comes from Christ, the waters of baptism which will wash away their sins. <laughs> 